I wonder um, what images come to your mind when you hear the word ritual? Maybe something vaguely new agey or pagan or maybe some shallow or pretentious ceremony. Or maybe I think for many of us, we think about a religious service, maybe going to church or synagogue or temple. Um, when I started doing these rituals more than 20 years ago, I had a friend who expressed her initial skepticism because she said she considered ritual an archaic practice, wishful thinking based on superstition and self-delusion. Wave a magic wand, light a special candle, repeat meaningless and or sentimental words with the expectation that something miraculous will happen. Some of you may share that view. On the other hand, some of you may have taken part in such ceremonies and found them meaningful, maybe even transformative. My friend told me later that her experience of ritual is far different from what she had expected. She said she was immediately affected by the first words and actions. She felt there was a palpable shift in the space. That in the, in the room where women were sat around a table, the space became, in her words, unified, whole, contained, embracing, intimate, and safe. She said that as a participant, she saw how the ritual form somehow elicited authentic responses from people who could not have uttered those under ordinary circumstances. It is, of course, that kind of ritual experience that I want to talk about this evening. I hope to demonstrate that ritual when well prepared and carefully presented in secure surroundings and under appropriate circumstances, can create the kind of atmosphere she so beautifully described. I hope to show that ritual can have a significant impact on our lives, and perhaps its most important feature is its ability to help bring about change. Since I've conducted, as Norma said, more than 100 rituals in the past 20 years, I've had many opportunities to observe the transformative power that rituals have had on my life and on the lives of others who've participated in them with me. And later on, I'll share some specific examples of rituals that I have done, some of my own and some with others. But first, the word ritual means a lot of different things to different people. So let's consider just what we mean, or I mean, by the term. I think of the rituals I do as creative rituals. For each one is created for a special uh, an occasion with a very specific purpose in mind. In my talk tonight, I will attempt to answer first what a ritual is, and then talk a little bit about where a ritual might be held, then explain when I think they're called for, and finally, why I think they are so important in our lives and for our society. In tomorrow's workshop, we'll talk about the how, how to plan, structure, and conduct rituals. So as it said, it would seem simple enough to give a precise definition of ritual, but it really turns out to be rather hard because there are so many activities and events that have ritual-like qualities, but which are not true rituals in the sense, at least, that I use the term. So I'd like to draw some distinctions, and first I'm going to talk a little bit about what rituals are not, just to clarify what distinguishes those, my ritual from those that have other ritual-like, has some ritual-like behaviors. 